OK, so in this case, ladies and gentlemen, what we have is we have two figures. And I believe it does say JML. OK, so actually, they did already tell us triangle JML is similar to triangle QFS. So this is something they tell us in the problem, all right? So you provided a problem, Carly, and here's the information you're given. You're given these two and these two figures, and they say they're similar to each other. That means they're proportionally similar, but they don't necessarily have the same size. And they want us to solve for x and for y. All right. Now, we can write a, what I would like to do is go ahead and write in some proportions. All right. Um, we know that the angles, obviously you guys can see that q and j are, are congruent, right? Obviously, f and m are congruent. And then s and l are congruent. And you can also prove that by using the similarity statement, right? Does everybody see that? Does everybody understand why those are equal to each other, those angles? You can do it two different ways. Look at the figure or look at the similarity statement. So now the next thing I'd like to do is write down a proportion statement. We know that JM, it, we can compare that to Q, QF. So I could say JM relates, is compared to QF, which is equal to the ratio of ML Then, just walk around that way. ML relates to FS. OK. What is that on the ground? Oh, you just stepped in that blue. Oh, your phone? You dropped your phone? No. So ML relates to F F MS or FS. And then JL relates to QS. OK? So what I want to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is now I've taken my ratios, or I've taken all the side lengths, and I've compared them to their other side length of the other triangle. <laughs> now, if I want to solve for x, what I want to do is determine what is the one ratio where I know both of the side lengths. So JM, right, compared to QF. Do I have no variables here, right? Do you guys agree? So therefore, I can say that. Um, JM is 4 is to 2. Okay, now I'm going to leave it as that. I know you can divide the 2 into there, but let's leave it as 4 is to 2. For the next one, ML is to, M is to FS. ML is 6x minus 3 over um, FS, which is 3. Can I solve this equation now as it is by using what we did last night in our homework? Yeah. All right, we can now apply our cross products. So now I can say 4 times 3 is equal to 2 times 6x minus 3. Now I had a student that said, ah, I didn't know what to do when you had that binomial. When you have the binomial, we need to be very careful and make sure that we apply distributive property. So therefore, I have 4 times 3, which is 12, equals 12x minus 6, add 6, and I get 18 equals 12x, divide by 12, divide by 12. Um, that's going to be 1 and a half, or 1.5. You can leave it as a fractional form as well. 1 half or 1.5 is the same thing as a reduced fraction form of 3 halves, right? which I would actually prefer would be 3 halves. Um, so now we got these two. Now I need to find JL and QS. I'm actually going to write it over here, JL over QS. The reason being, ladies and gentlemen, is what's JL? JL is 3y minus 2. And um, QS is 5. Okay, So if I write my proportion over here, now I can do cross multiplication again. But what I want you guys to notice, what's so important about this, 
is notice which, which ratio I'm doing cross multiplication with twice. I'm doing it with the ratio JM and QF. What is difference about this ratio JM and QF? The difference is I have both of the values for JM and for QF, right? I have both these values. There's no variables in this proportion, right? Does everybody see? There's no variables in this proportion. So I can use it to help me solve for both of them. Taylor, I don't know why you just came in late. What? Take. Uh, and the other one? Are you writing this down? OK. So this is coming late. This is what you're going to want to know, because this is what you're missed, up, missed on. OK? What I was saying, Taylor, is you missed this information, right? So you're going to want to write this down, because this is what we're going over. OK? OK. So now, looking over here, let's go ahead and um, finish this up. So by applying cross multiplication, 5 times 4 is 20 equals 2 times 3y minus 2. I'll do 5 times 4. That becomes 20 equals 6y minus 4. Add 4, add 4. 24 equals 6y. Divide by 6, divide by 6. y equals 4. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, in this problem, you can now say what y is and what x is. Okay. So when applying these types of problems, when applying these types of problems, you need to go ahead and, and go through this. Um, or make sure that you find the proportion that does not have any variables. Okay? Find the proportion that does not have any variables, and then use that to set two other proportions equal to it to solve. 